Hi guys, I wanted to um, record a quick video just to give buyers an idea of what the best strategy is moving forward to um, to get into homes, to get offers accepted. It's a very competitive market. I can speak for uh, Mammoth County, but um, anything and everything that's close to uh, Garden State Parkway, uh, close to Staten Island, Brooklyn, um, you know, close to the uh, train stations and uh, and the bus is uh, going fairly quick. There is a lot of movement from the city, as, as you uh, probably know by now. And how do you, in this market with low inventory and very high demand, how do you secure a home? How do you get your offer accepted with so many offers going in, above asking? And um, the... the um, the the best way to to get your offer approved and there's no guarantees is to put a package together that maximizes the profits for the seller and also reduces the risk for the seller so there's really two things that the seller is looking for they're looking to get the most money based on what the market value at the given moment compared to other uh, sales of homes in the area as well as slightly outside of the immediate area immediate development um, is and number two is they want to get to the closing they want as little nuances as possible getting to that finish line and um, um, I know it's it, it, everything is kind of surrounding sellers but it really is this is what happens in the regular sellers market and this is sellers market on steroids so the, the best way to put an offer that's going to be attractive is to maximize that amount and to reduce contingencies. Now, um, some of the main contingencies are appraisal contingency. And appraisal contingency is important because uh, appraisals have not caught up to uh, the market values that are on uh, that we see now. So there is a risk with that, obviously, because let's just say the last home in that development or um, let's just say development sold for, I'll give you an example, 500,000. And now you're putting an offer at 530 and you're waiving the appraisal. Well, if we're comparing apples to apples and it's a three bedroom versus a three bedroom, everything else is the same, condition is the same. The other one went for 500,000 in let's say December and it's been three months. There's a good chance that the appraiser is going to bring it up slightly to adjust for the inflation in the marketplace. Um, but that adjustment could be anywhere from, you know, 510 to 515 to, to 520. Or it could potentially be if if the um, it could be on the lower side, it could be at 500. Right. And there's really nobody that could tell you where it's going to land. Um, now, if there's, an, if there's a difference in a bedroom, then there's going to be an adjustment made for that. And obviously, if you're buying one with, a, with an extra bedroom or a basement, um, the appraiser should adjust for, for the difference in, in, in the homes, right? Also, condition. Condition makes a, makes a big difference as well. Now, some things get adjusted higher than, than others. And I'm not going to go into that. I'm not an adjuster, but I'm just giving you... Um, an idea about appraisal waivers, which is very important because that's something that's a lot of buyers, more educated buyers, not first time home buyers and and not the buyers that just entered the uh, the market. Um, they have been um, this has been explained by the agents and I usually do you know a pretty thorough job explaining this um, to make sure that the buyer is aware of what what they're getting into in terms of you know what the risk is the risk is if the house does not appraise for 530 in this particular example well they're on the hook to pay the difference between the appraisal price and the price that the offer that they negotiated and went into contract with the seller okay that's one of the contingency but it's a very attractive contingency to um to waive um for the seller okay the second contingency is inspection contingency, and there are two different inspections. I mean, there's there's one big inspection, but then you can break it up into two. One is major, one is minor. Major includes structural and environmental. 
Um, and minor includes things, you know, it, it, it includes a multitude of features in the home, including windows. For example, a window doesn't fully come out, doesn't fully sh shut down, the balancers are off, um, you know, the, um, let's just say, small appliances. So small appliances are uh, things like refrigerator, dishwasher, um, uh, what do you call it, a furnace, and uh, AC system, right? That's not included in major. But if you're willing to take the chances, if you do your homework, you look at the seller's disclosure, and things are relatively new, there's no guarantee they're not going to break when you get them, or there's no guarantee that they're not broken as you get them, even if they're a few years old. But risk is reduced. It's all about, so for the, for, so seller wants the risk reduced and get to that finish line. For the buyer, the agent has to help the buyer uh, reduce their risk if they're get, if they're waiving these contingencies. For the appraisal contingency, you know, he has to, he has to look at the neighborhood and, and run a comparison, a comparative market analysis and see where the last few sales landed in terms of what they actually went for and how far away they are and how different they are and, and give give a good estimate, right? A cl close estimate to what they think the home is going to get appraised for. There's no guarantees. It might, it, it might be off, you know, and you know, some, some, some people are better than doing than others at running comparative market analysis. But then it comes the inspection. And the inspection, same thing. You know, if you look at the seller's disclosure, you look at the condition of the home, you walk around the home, usually it's 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 not it's not hard to tell. It there are things that you could see right away if the house has been uh, taken care of well or not. And then there's also um, you know, obviously walk around walk around with your agent and and see if if things point out right away right if, if it looks like something might be wrong that it, you might be on to something now there might be something that looks wrong to you but it it really is not right and ultimately an inspector who is licensed can tell the difference but that's where you take that little bit of a risk and that's where you reduce the risk for for the seller and that's when your offer looks more attractive right so that's the second contingency that you can waive. It's the it's it's just leave the major in, uh, inspection, um, which is really structural and environmental, right? So, and then the minor inspection waive that, and if you waive that, then you have a much higher chance of getting um, your offer uh, accepted and going into contract. Uh, the other thing that I usually do is I shorten the the days on the contract such as um when you're getting into con when you're coming out of attorney review there's no reason you need f 10 days to pull the funds together for the deposit so what i suggest to my buyers is if you are comfortable and you have the funds um have the funds and cut the check literally as soon as you get out of that attorney review so monday you get out of return attorney review you're in contract in new jersey Send that check out. Have it ready. Okay. Worst case scenario, send it on Tuesday, but don't wait till, you know, Thursday or Friday. The other one is inspection. You know, inspection. Um, I've had buyers that they get out of attorney review and then they schedule inspection five, seven days from, from getting out of attorney review. That's a long time. I mean, the seller wants to move on. They want to sell. They want to move on. They have carrying costs. And I'm not favoring the seller, but I'm just telling you, that's the mentality of the seller right that's what that they want to reduce that risk they want to shorten it if for, for whatever reason transaction does not make it to the finish line and it stops at one of these points one of these phases they don't want to be in this phase for weeks they want to be in and out of each phase for for a few you know for for a week but the shortest period of time possible for each phase right so that's for inspection i, I usually reduce the number of days um that the 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 buyer the client has to do the inspection and also report it back to the attorney, to the to the seller's attorney. Uh, the, traje uh, the trajectory is usually, you know, seller gets the report. I mean, buyer gets the inspection report. And then they look at, they create a wish list of what they want or they don't want. And they send it back to the, uh, to their attorney and their attorney sends a letter to the seller's attorney. And then, and then, you know, and then between the two attorneys, between the buyer and the seller, there's a negotiation through the attorneys, 
using them as uh, um, intermediaries to to uh, resolve any type of inspection issues, right? But that's if there's something major on it, right? But if you're waiving the inspection, minor stuff, you know, don't don't create items in minor stuff. You can't do it once you waive that inspection contingency, right? Now back to the appraisal for just a second. When the appraisal is being done, um, the bank is not, you're not waiving the appraisal that bank is gonna order to appraise the house. Um, you, they, they can't do it, you can't do it because they're not gonna be able to give you a loan on the home. So what you are, when you're waiving the appraisal, you're not waiving the appraisal, you're waiving the appraisal contingency. Meaning that you're okay paying the difference between the appraised value and the offer contracted uh, price you and the seller negotiated. Finally, um, the other thing that I do in, in this market, especially if somebody has been pre-approved before, you know, they have the funds, their credit history is not changing uh, too much. They're, you know, they're pretty much doing the, the same thing. It's not hard to get a mortgage commitment in, in three weeks. Sometimes you can get it even sooner. Now that's an aggressive timeline, but if the uh, loan officer and the bank can do it, and I usually have a conversation with them and I find out if they can't do it, then I shorten that time frame as well, right? And uh, last, by not, last but not least, after, you, after the buyer received the mortgage commitment, uh, usually within, you know, we, we, usually within two weeks, uh, two, work, two working weeks, right? So about 10 to 12 days, it's possible to close, right? I usually give it a little more, about 15 days, so three working weeks. And, but I don't stretch it for another month. It just, it doesn't make any sense. So all in all, from exiting attorney review, right, and as you start the contract, to get to that finish line should not take longer than 45 days. That's what looks good to the buyer, I mean, to the seller. Now, some sellers want it even closer, but I think most sellers understand that if it's a good, solid buyer with good financials and uh, they're, not, they're not risk for transaction falling apart, um, they will wait 45 days. I think that's very reasonable, okay? So guys, I can go on and on and on about this, but uh, those are, you know, those are the main things that should be considered when putting an offer in. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you have my information, feel free to reach out to me and we can have, uh, you know, we can have a little bit of an in-depth discussion on this and I can give you more info. And, uh, you know, if I could help, great. That's what I'm here for. I uh, look forward to speaking with you and I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.